Welcome to Full Scope, a podcast designed to analyze the games that we love, the headlines of music, and the movies we can't forget. I'm your host, Winsor Burns. My counterpart, Save by Morris, is not able to be on for this one, but, but I'm joined by a special guest, uh, DeMarlon Gardner. He was been on uh, for a past time last year, a good friend of mine, a, a past college classmate. Thanks so much for being on, man. Oh, yeah, man. Appreciate you having me back, man. Always a <laughs> Video pleasure. This time. Video this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yes. It's- Definitely. Yes, um, well, we have a lot of topics to get into for this one, and we're going to do some some summer league talk and also some thoughts on the NBA offseason. To start off with just thoughts on Victor Webanyama's uh, summer league games, um, earlier this week the Spurs announced that he would be shut down the rest of the summer league after the first two games. You know, he struggled in, in his in his debut, only shooting 2 or 13 from the field. But this past Sunday night he had a 27-point, um, 12-rebound performance. And it's really interesting to see, like, just the clamor around him because – it's been, I think, since LeBron, we haven't heard a, a, a player get this much attention coming in. Like, he's he's a celebrity already. Like, wherever he goes, he's gonna draw attention. Like, like what were your thoughts on his on his two games, and also, you know, the realistic the realistic expectations for him in his first season? Yeah. So, <laughs> I'll start by saying this. I gotta gotta uh, make this statement before I answer the question, because uh, a lot of people have been talking about this greatest prospect of all time to me and i just gotta say (laughs) lebron james is the greatest nba prospect of all time (laughs) it is not even close uh man i've been hearing all these analysts talk about oh yeah he's gonna be better and this and that you telling me a guy who has never played you know this physical of a game uh is going to have a better career than arguably one of the best, or if not the one of the best three players. best, yeah, one of the three best players <laughs> we've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, so so I just had to had to make that statement for all the people that are saying he's going to be be this this great prospect, but which I do think he's going to be be good, but yeah. it's, it's going to take some time to to get there. But as far as his uh his games, his performance, uh, first game like you said, he he struggled. Uh, had what nine points, yeah. uh, s- s- boards, really good uh, defensive presence, uh, blocking uh, about five shots. And man, I, I just think he's he's good defensively. But uh, my two takeaways from those summer league games is uh, one, he needs to to get some strength. Oh, he needs to get, get a little bit bigger. <laughs> oh yeah, he's getting pushed around too much. <laughs> yeah, it, and it was crazy. Like almost every play, he puts the ball on the floor. He gets bumped a little bit. He's flying line away so i think he needs to work at getting getting a little bit stronger and the second thing is his footwork uh i think he's he's a little clumsy at times and like i said he's getting pushed over and i think that's a big part of that is the strength uh and the footwork but i think he's 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 with a good organization that's going to really uh be good at developing him and he's going to give him yeah exactly all the tools that he needs to get better so i think he he works on those couple things mainly get that strength up I think he'll be really good. Um, but that second game, he, he surprised me because after that first game, I was like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't and that's know the about thing. This <laughs> and that's the thing. Like, Summer League, I've heard so many people, people say Summer League is like the instant reaction type of like situation because, you know, e- even we saw with Lonzo Ball, his first Summer League game, I mean, everybody was there. Everybody was saying, like, what what's going to happen? Like, with this game, is he going to be the next Magic Johnson? There was so much clamor. Like, do you think. In terms of, especially being with the Spurs in an organization that's so like level-headed and they're grounded and they're just fundamental, do you think that's going to like even be a bigger boost to like kind of keep him grounded a- around you know the surrounding noise? Oh, for sure. Like the the hype is is real and like the whole the thing that's been going on with Britney Spears oh, yeah. and all <laughs> this stuff, bro. That was hilarious. <laughs> I'm like, of all people, that's the first. That's the exactly. first like. The, the, the first controversy you meet with is Britney Spears. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, he's already getting that attention. So yeah. I think he's in the perfect organization to yeah. help him balance and deal with that type of thing because Coach Pop, he ain't having that type of stuff. Oh, so no. he's, he's going to keep him grounded and uh, he's going he's gonna to keep him on track and focus. So I think he's, he's with the best organization to help him, you know, kind of tune out that noise on the outside. Definitely. So. Um, and now getting to Scoot uh, Henderson's current developments, um, you know, in his summer league debut this past Friday, he got off got off to just an extremely fast start, scoring 13 first quarter points on five of seven shooting against the Rockets, um, adding three bou- three rebounds and three assists. And it's interesting with Portland because Damian Lillard, that's been the big headline for the offseason mm-hmm. go him finally um, making a trade request. Like, 
What do you think about Scoot Henderson coming into a new situation where he possibly could be the new face of that franchise if Damian Lillard gets moved and now he's going to be in a situation where all eyes are going to really be on him as like that next cornerstone? Yeah, honestly, it's unfortunate that, you know, if if Dame decide, decides actually gets traded, yeah. uh, that they can't play along beside each other. But if he does, it's I think it's the perfect situation for uh, Scoot uh, mm-hmm. because he can turn out to be – a franchise player. Um, he he reminds me a little bit of Westbrook, can do a little bit of all. Oh, yeah. He's athletic, explosive, uh, can score the ball, can play make and rebound the ball at his size. So I think I'm, I'm interested to see what he's going to do, uh, especially if he's he's handed the keys right away if mm-hmm. Dame decides to, you know, go on somewhere else. Yeah. Hopefully not Miami. <laughs> I was going to ask, like, like, like what, what, what do you think about the Damian Miller situation? Like, like he's been in the, me and Savon talked about it. He's been in Portland so long, one of the most loyal players, but it feels like he's kind of getting to that breaking point if he wants to like actually contend for titles now. Yeah. It, it's, it's long overdue. Like oh, yeah. it, it, it's, we've been saying Dame needs to leave the past four or five years, man. Yeah. And he's, He's given a lot to that organization. Uh, been great. What this past season? What he averaged thirty points a game. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculous. So I think he's given all that he can to them, but they're not, you know, building the pieces around him uh, to, you know, be contenders for a championship. So I think it's, I think it's about time for him to leave. Uh, just don't want him to see see him go to Miami. <laughs> that would be tough though, like him, Butler, and Adebayo. It, like who, oh yeah, I'm trying to think of who they. That's would why I don't up. want him to go. Yeah, exactly. Like that's a crazy. <laughs> that's a crazy big three because yeah, I'm interested to see what Boston does because Jalen Brown and Tatum. Mm-hmm. I just I wonder, and, and that's your team, right? Boston, Boston, yeah, Boston's yeah. your team. Like, like, do you think that duo can can figure it out? Because they this was supposed to be the year with Milwaukee gone out in the first round. They, they were supposed to get it done. I agree, bro. They continue to surprise me. <laughs> yeah. Every year. Not the right way. Like, <laughs> like even last year, uh, in the finals against Golden State, I thought they Boston was the better overall team. Yeah. Um, as far as the starters plus the bench. But man, this year I just knew for sure this was the championship year. Like you said, especially with Milwaukee being knocked out in the first round. Right. Um, I just don't I don't get it. <laughs> I really don't get it. And I it's think they can work together. It's that lack of a killer yeah. instinct. Oh, yeah. Right? It's, that's, the biggest, that's the biggest problem right there. Like, nobody's stepping up to the plate and like, hey, we, we got punched in the mouth. We got to go punch somebody else in the mouth. Or we're always waiting after we get punched in the mouth. Now we want to step up. We got to go out and start the game off uh, on, a, on a high level. But it's just it's not that way. <laughs> yeah. It, it really isn't. Um, and, and now getting into Shet Holmgren's back, um, being back with OKC, just thoughts on kind of like how he's been playing. Um, in his summer league opener this past Saturday, he had 16 points and 10 rebounds. And he's obviously coming off of a significant injury of his right foot. Um, and the Thunder, they've got just so much young talent. Um, they also <laughs> added the, the, the number 10 pick, Case and Wallace. I mean, that's a team, and I know we're going to talk about later in the show, like a surprise team. Like the Thunder, especially with, 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 um, with Shea Gilch Alexander, they can be that type of team that really just – build something from the ground up kind of has that young budding talent but uh what did you what did you think about homegrown's uh looking in the in the summer league and also what okc can do going forward yeah i think he he looked really good like he didn't like he didn't miss a step uh they were killing in that pick and roll game uh yeah. and he was getting lobs like crazy uh so i think i think he's looking really good offensively uh as well on the defensive end he has some nasty blocks uh, throughout the summer league so far in the three games he's played, man, and he's man, he's looking like a rookie of the year <laughs> again. Already, so, already, yeah. man, That's scary. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I, I'm looking forward to watch the Thunder play. Like that, that's a sleeper. <laughs> yeah, they they, so. they they really are a sleeper because like when you look at at the West in terms of just like you know we we know that the top teams like Denver, um, Golden State, Phoenix, the Lakers. Like, how do you feel as though when when we saw what Sacramento did last year, they pushed Golden State to seven? I mean, that was like they're, they're at times it really felt as though like they could they could really beat Golden State. Like, do you, like what does OKC have to do to like get to that Sacramento level of like really pushing the top teams in the West to the, to the break? Yeah, I think they just got to play hard, man, and, yeah. and go out there playing carefree. It's like, hey, we're we're a young team. Nobody's believing in us. 
we got to believe in ourselves. So it's just to having that confidence and that swag, kind of like Sacramento, man. Like yeah. they got those young, fast, quick, athletic guys. <laughs> Can't like, be slow against my team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just go hoop, man. Just go yeah. hoop. So I think they just got to like, hey, we they, they old. We're faster than them. Like we're more athletic than them. Like mm-hmm. it's no, we can be in this game. So I think they just got to take that mentality kind of like uh, Sacramento did. And yeah, they can, they can, they can scare some teams. Definitely. And, so, and before we move on, have there been any other uh, players in the summer league that have stood out to you or, or ones that you think that, you know, could make a jump? I, I mean, I, I, I forgot to even mention, but um, I believe Brandon Miller, uh, he's, he's obviously a high pick and he, his game like looks really smooth in terms of like his, 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 his offense and, and what he can put together. Like, have there been any other players that have stood out to you so far? Yeah, Jabari, Jabari Smith from uh, Houston, Houston Rockets, man. Kid was going, he was going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, like he was just out there just playing ball, man, and dominating. What, he had like two 30-point games? Yeah. Like, yeah, like he, he's one that that's that I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing play, uh, especially on the new coach, uh, Coach uh, Yudoka. So, and then it's, Brett, it's, Brad yeah. gets the bag. And they yeah. bring in Dylan Brooks. Like, like what do you think? That's about, another like, team, man. Yeah, you, that's another, <laughs> there's so many teams, man. Like, what do you think about Houston? Because like they're kind of going because they reportedly didn't want to bring back Harden. They want to go into a different route. Like, what do you think about them just kind of like rebuilding that infrastructure? Because when you add a player like Fred Van Vliet, you want uh, a serious culture and also a defensive minded culture as well with Amy Udoka. Yeah, I think I think um, what they've been doing is they're taking those draft picks that they've been getting every year and just working on developing them. And mm-hmm. now they bring in a coach who has some good experience, has finals experience, and yeah. who can coach these guys up and, and help them, you know, win. So I think they're banking on what they got out of all those drafts. And betting on themselves, as Fred yep, would say, betting it, on themselves. <laughs> exactly. Focusing on the young, fast, athletic kids. Exactly. So, yeah. So, yeah. It, it's going to be, yeah, this year is going to be interesting, man. <laughs> it, it really is. We're going to take a quick break. And we'll be right back. 